Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here and today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know to get started in Tarkov Arena. I know, I know, I know a lot of you don't have access yet and I really hope that that gets sorted out soon. But I have just got back from the first ever Arena Esports tournament and spent three full days analysing some of the best players in the world who've had access to Arena for longer than anyone else. So let's get into it. To start with, there are two basic numbers that you need to watch for, which are ARP and Rubles. ARP, or Arena Reputation Points, represents your rank. You gain 25 points for each win and you lose 25 for each loss. This is a kind of MMR or ELO rating that we are used to from other games. When entering a match, you pick a preset from the ones available to you and at the beginning only a small selection of presets are unlocked. These also cost different amounts of rubles, which you can win more of through a successful victory in a game. Your performance in the match, primarily kills, influences the money and experience won, but the win is more important overall. As I said, you can only play with basic kits at the start, and there are five categories to choose from. Rating is the first tab and is based directly on ARP, so the higher kits here only get unlocked as you move up the ladder and achieve higher ranks. The other four preset types are based on an unlock tree, using experience gained in each class being CQB, Assault, Scout and Marksman. Each preset can lead on to further presets lower down in the tree with a higher power, and to unlock these you need a certain amount of experience in the current kit to unlock the next one down. Following the tree down the branches to the kits that you ultimately want to use will allow you to determine which earlier presets to pick up and level as you need to go down specific paths to unlock many of the later kits in the tree. Rating kits on the first tab are not as efficient to use at the beginning, as although they can sometimes be quite powerful such as Champion, they are only based on ARP, which you gain and lose with the other presets anyway. It's more efficient to spend time leveling the other kits with tree progression first and only using the rating kits after the other trees have been completed, or at least as complete as you want to make them. Of course, if a preset looks fun and you don't care about min-maxing the tree completion, then don't let anybody stop you from using it. The presets in Arena are very varied, and there are a lot of them, so the main things to watch out for are the gun and its stats, the ammo that it's given, and the size of the mags, then the sight that it may or may not be provided with, whether it has a headset or not, armour, and finally grenades and stims. One really important thing to note that is incredibly easy to miss at first glance is that armour can come damaged, which greatly impacts its performance versus expectations in some situations. For example, the Pharaoh preset that was actually used quite a lot in the tournament comes with a Gen 4 high mobility, but it arrives pre-damaged with only 45 points versus a max of 65. This makes it more like a class 4.5, which still isn't bad, but if you're expecting a brand new class 5, then it can be a little bit of a shock. I also expect players to eventually figure out the meta of kit swapping, as each preset has upsides and downsides which could potentially be improved by exchanging items between players at the start of each round. For example, the Surf kit, which is mainly a VSS with 20 round mags and a class 4 rig, comes with both a short range and long range optic, allowing another player to take the Valde while the Surf player uses the OKP7. After picking a preset, you spawn in with your team. There are two game modes available at the moment, but for this guide we'll be assuming that you're playing Team Fight, which is the standard 5v5 game mode that we saw in the tournament. Make sure to check and remember the colour of your armband, you can check this on the final tab of the inventory screen when you load in if you forget. This is also when you get a few moments to hotkey your meds, which is persistent after you've done it for the first time. The game begins and there is 1 minute and 30 seconds to eliminate the enemy team. After this, the capture points open up and there is further time to either eliminate the enemy again or capture one of the points that appears on the map. This is 45 seconds on the four smaller maps being Equator, the tiny shopping mall one, Bay 5, which is the one with all the containers, Bowl being the dusty one with the helicopter in the middle, and Air Pit, the map with the large aircraft through the centre. Sawmill is the exception, with 1 minute 20 to capture the point because of the increased size of this map. Some of these locations, namely Sawmill, Bowl and Air Pit, have two control points, which makes it harder to defend them, and so central map control is very important. With only 7 seconds to successfully complete a capture, it is important to know firstly where they are, and secondly not be too far away, as the enemy team can sometimes cap it before you're even able to get there. This is particularly difficult on Sawmill because of the distance between the two capture points, it's the greatest out of all of the maps. If none of these victory conditions are met, and neither team has capped the points when the timer ends, the cleanup crew is released, endless raider-like AI whose goal it is to clear out the remaining players. This can become a game of who can hide and survive the longest, as although you can still technically capture the point, being out in the open versus the bots is often a death sentence. By letting the game go on this long, you are introducing a large element of randomness into the outcome. Sometimes even bosses spawn, and we saw Tagilla take down a player with the sledgehammer during the grand final, which is really not ideal. If players manage to 
evade the AI for long enough, all remaining PMCs are given the toxin debuff around a minute after the cleanup crew arrives. Even if both teams have managed to evade the AI, they now have to continuously heal to stay alive, and eventually one side will run out of meds if they are not killed first. The team with the longest surviving player wins, and the round is over. A full game of Arena finishes after one team reaches a set number of round victories. This is currently first to five in regular ranked, but seven during the competition on the big stage. Each round begins the same way, with the exact kit that you chose at the beginning. You cannot swap presets during a match, and nothing carries over between each round, so you're fully incentivized to use all your stims, grenades, and as much ammo as you can in each round without preserving anything. The same goes for anything that you loot from the enemy team, this doesn't carry over, so don't bother trying to scavenge anything or keep it for the next round. If you need something during a match though, like extra meds, the search mechanic from base Tarkov has been removed completely, so you can see everything on them as soon as you check the body. All of this makes kits with longish acting stims like SJ6 quite powerful, as the rounds are often shorter than the stims active time, which gives a big advantage on stamina over other players. Grimadol is similar but has Painkiller integrated into it as well, which may or may not be preferred, but certainly another one to look out for. There are also loose items around the map. Meds are rarely worth looting outside of SJ6, Trimadol, ETG and the like, but fixed weapon spawns can be very handy if just to pinch the scope from an SV98 for example. There are weapon spawns on both Sawmill and Air Pit at the sides of the map with these guns, providing a random selection of DMRs and bolt actions with higher powered optics than you can find on some of the earlier kits. This can allow you to bring an SMG or an assault rifle preset and use the weapon spawns to get the range that you need without being locked into a sniper kit for the whole match. Also, presets with grenades are powerful if thrown well at the start. I'm sure very soon it will be known where to throw these to pick up spawn kills, both for players rushing out early to control key locations and sightlines, as well as those hanging back to prevent the more obvious grenade kills. A team with five nades can often take out at least one player right at the start from the opposing side, which leaves you in a really strong position beginning the round with a 5v4. So I hope that everybody who expected to get access to Arena gets it pretty soon, and once you do, I'm sure you'll want to know which presets are the best to start out with, so check out my next video which I'll be finalising shortly, and I'll link it here once it's ready. Until then, a big shout out to all my patrons, and as always, have fun in your raids.